live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live 2018. Brought to you by Cisco, NetApp, and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Cisco Live 2018 in Orlando, Florida. Jo joining me, my co-host for this segment, Dave Vellante, sitting in for John Furrier, and happy to welcome to the program Jeff Eckerd, who's the Vice President of Storage Solutions at IBM. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, you guys. and 26,000 people here. Uh, it, it, it'd been many years since I'd been to Cisco Live. There's some things that are same, many of the same faces, but a lot of new jobs, a lot of buzz going on. What, what's your impression been of the show this yeah, week? It, it's been an interesting, great show for, uh, for IBM and our presence, but you know, it, it's a very large ecosystem of Cisco partners, a lot of their, you know, our joint end users, and a lot of focus on multi-cloud. You've consistently heard that as, a theme from Cisco as well as IBM, you know, since last fall at their partner forum, and they've continued it here with a lot of focus on uh, being able to take tools and capabilities and enabling enterprises to manage data where they want to manage it. And uh, it's really interesting from traditional systems vendors like Cisco to see that, that focus, and particularly around developers. Yeah, it's, it's been fascinating for me to watch. Jeff, you and I have some background in like the, the storage and storage networking piece specifically, yep. where it was like, okay, you know, where I sit in the stack and I've got a couple of integrations and we work on our standards here, it's much broader, uh, the things oh, that we're working on. We're yeah. talking about cloud, there's a lot of software that flows, you know, data and applications are critically important. Is, talk, talk a little bit about that, some of that transformation uh, and, and how you're seeing the expansion. And, yeah, you know. no, it's, a, it's an interesting time. Uh, you know, if you think about the opportunities and challenges facing all enterprises, um, it, it, data is at the core of digital transformation, digital enhancement, whatever term you want to use with it. Typically it's focused in on uh, wanting to provide real-time insights, right, so that you make better decisions uh, against threats or opportunities, uh, being able to deliver personalized services to your uh, clients, and then also improving your internal processes and business outcomes. And so data is core for, for digital transformation, and, and you kind of see it kind of this uh, web over of, of what we're talking about here and, and then what we're doing with clients as well. You know, Jeff, you talk about multi-cloud, you've been in the business for a while, and throughout your career, you've tried to help customers simplify their lives, and everybody felt, uh, thought, okay, I'm going to put stuff in the cloud, it's going to get simpler, and now you, now you see this spate of clouds, whether it's infrastructure as a service, private clouds, SaaS, and complexity is, in some regards, never been higher, particularly as it relates to the data. That's right. You've got to figure out, you know, where do you put this stuff? How do you protect it? Uh, what about governance? Uh, e even, even if you think security's better in the cloud, it might be different for every cloud. So how is IBM approaching, you know, generally in, in your team specifically, approaching simplifying the complex of this multi-cloud world? Sure, so from, a, uh, so from an IBM perspective, you know, we, at the top level we approach it with innovative technology and a lot of industry expertise, whether it's in financial services or healthcare. Cloud and what we do with the public, IBM Cloud is uh, really important around the services we provide there, data and AI. And then as you come down from that, modern infrastructure is key because modern infrastructure supports the data. So, so when you look at, you know, 80% of enterprises are intending to be multi-cloud, something like 70% already are, right, because of what you referenced with the uh, consumption of SaaS. So, Multi-cloud is the de facto operating model for applications and then therefore for the data. So from an IBM storage and SDI perspective, we kind of view, um, there, there are three primary adoption patterns that we're seeing with our clients. Uh, the first is around modernizing traditional applications or workloads, uh, which also drags modern infrastructure, flash-based systems, leveraging more of storage efficiency technologies like compression and dedupe, uh, being able to protect that data uh, whether it's in a traditional VMware environment or the emerging containers uh, environment. So yeah, data is at the, the core, and you know, we have you know, the partnership that we, that we have with Cisco around VersaStack enables us to support traditional private clouds, whether those are built on the VMware set of tools, or now as we, last week we announced the uh, VersaStack for IBM Cloud Private. 
Uh, IBM Cloud Private is an enterprise platform for developers to leverage microservices and containerized IBM middleware services, whether that's WebSphere or MQ or Microservices Builder, as well as a whole catalog of open source uh, technologies and tools to get agility out of the DevOps process and then also layer on analytics on, on top of that. So, so customers, they're going to want consistency across all, all those clouds. So, so what role do you guys bring? Are you trying to be a platform of platforms or is that, is that too aspirational? And obviously you can't have 100% market share, yeah. so that's not you know, practical, but to the extent that people adopt your technologies, is that how we should be thinking about yeah, it? Yeah, so, well, so IBM Cloud Private is an open platform. It's built on Docker runtimes and Kubernetes orchestration. Um, we, we are, it's, it's open to where you, know, you can leverage things like Red Hat OpenShift if you've chosen them for your containers platform. Uh, and then we also support the traditional private clouds with VMware. So there's a whole set of tools in there. You know, our, what we're trying to do from a data management perspective is protect it, whether that's backup and recovery, morphing into this new category of secondary data reuse. So for instance, from a traditional workflow of uh, just doing backup and recovery, we can now take native format copies of the data, whether that's an Oracle or SQL Server database, et cetera, and take that data to the public cloud where different personas and use cases can act on that data. So you can spin up a, 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 nat a VM from that native format within our tools in the, the IBM cloud. So that, that's from a data protection standpoint on data management uh, we have later this year we'll talk more formally about programs that we have around metadata management that's where you can index and classify for instance unstructured or structured data and you know act on that in terms of uh, you know, where was it last access? Who should be accessing it? Is it personally identifiable information? Do I want to run analytics on it? So the metadata management is an opportunity uh, to plug into broader IBM things, whether it's Watson Data Platform or information governance catalogs, to provide that kind of Uber across cloud infrastructure management. And that's a machine sort of intelligence and uh, aut automation component Yeah, it can be, scale, it right? can absolutely be used for you know, augmented intelligence, artificial intelligence, some of the machine learning pieces as well. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff, I'm wondering if you can give us a little insight as some of the places that customers are falling down. I mean, we were just talking to a systems integrator before you came on and he said, well, sometimes I take a virtualized environment and I move it and it's not really geared for this, this modern platform. I, you know, containerization can help in a lot of these environments. Mm -hmm. so when you talk about the pattern we've seen that works many times is you modernize the platform, and then I can modernize the application, start pulling things apart, start refactoring, start playing with some of these environments because I, I can't just, you know, lift and shift can help, but it can't be, that's, that's the only move. I, I, there's a lot of work that needs to get done, and a lot of time that, that's underestimated. Right, well, it, it, it's not a panacea, but there is, there's a, a key tool called Transformation Advisor that is part of the IBM Cloud Private platform, uh, it's intended to assist with the, uh, the, the challenge that you just stated, which is, okay, how do I take a traditional workload, determine if it's ready to be containerized, and then start the process of containerization. So there's, uh, it, it, you can go back to some of the VM migration pieces too. There's a whole set of tools that, that enterprises have used. Transformation Advisor is, is one tooling example of what we can do in the platform. And then we obviously have services through global services that can help at a large scale for enterprises to kind of make that step. Yeah, you bring up a great point there because we, we always struggle with some of these tool transformations, but if you go back to virtualization, it was really some of the organizational things that had to shift. Uh, wonder if you can talk about some of the things that, that are changing here. Uh, at the, this show, we've spent a lot of time talking about Cisco's moving up the stack. Network people are mm -hmm. much closely, much more closer tied to some of those new application development, especially with things like intent-based networking. Well, it's, it's an interesting you know, reminder that we get often from clients, because you're, you're really touching at some of the, you know, remember the operational steps. Uh, you know, things like containerization are interesting new technologies and there's a lot of advantages to them. Uh, but just going back a, a minute of you know, the heritage with what we've been doing with Cisco around VersaStack, leveraging it on a VMware environment, we, we hear a lot from customers that their operational practices really are, are set around VMware and the VMware tooling. So one of the, the things that we did with IBM Cloud Private is it, it can run on top of VMware. So as customers want to take a kind of transitive step towards microservices, they can continue to leverage their operational practices around VMware. So it, it's important to, you know, it, it sometimes takes enterprises a little bit longer than, than you may guess, right, to, to embrace the, the new set of things. Uh, 
But if you, you know, our product portfolio and our directions are set where they can leverage some of the operational pieces they already have. Well, the, just for our, for our viewers who may not know, I mean, the recent history of, of IBM and Cisco is quite interesting. IBM, at one point, purchased a company called BNT, which got sold as part of the x86 sale to Lenovo. That opened up a huge opportunity for IBM and Cisco to partner because it was a very clear swim lanes. And that sort of catalyzed uh, a relationship that, from your standpoint, VersaStack was sort of mm -hmm. the first instantiation of that relationship. So take us through sort of where you guys are in the partnership and where, where you see it going. Sure, yeah, so um, VersaStack, for folks who may not be familiar, is it's a converged system, right? So it's IBM storage, flash or otherwise, leverages Cisco UCS servers and then their Nexus and MDS switching. So it's, it's integrated, validated as a you know, single solution to, uh, as the name implies, to be very versatile and provide agility and, and flexibility. And so from, you know, through our routes to market, either with distribution or resellers or system integrators, it is a way that we can address platforms that matter to our joint customers. And that, we've talked about IBM Cloud Private, a lot of heritage around VMware and SQL Server and Oracle, uh, and a lot of focus around SAP HANA. So we, we typically will partner around which enterprise platforms are, are, we, are we going? And then we also partner uh, in general around MDS switching uh, with, with Cisco. And you know, we'll, we'll talk more about that you know, in months to come as we enhance that relationship. So the solutions part of, of your title, you just mentioned VMware, Oracle, SAP, HANA, mm -hmm. there, there may be others. How do you guys approach solutions? Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so a, a solution you know, at, at a pedagogic level is uh, a, a successful, repeatable outcome. And what, what we focus on then are the integrations, right, that, that matter. Those could be integrations with IBM, tools, like we talk about with IBM Cloud Private, can be the integrations that we do jointly with Cisco through the validated design process for some of these uh, applications or databases. And so we have teams that do the, the validation work and figure out how we marry uh, IBM capabilities with uh, ecosystem capabilities. And, and there's a whole, you know, whether we're automating private clouds or accelerating workloads, including you know, the partnership that IBM, Cisco have with Hortonworks, uh, you know, there's a, a whole, and, and then in industry context as well, particularly in healthcare and financial services, we'll pick the platforms that really matter and then do the integrations that enable us to take, whether it's our systems or our software or IBM level capabilities to market. I want to come back to this simplicity theme, especially in, specifically in the context of data protection. So with, with all this multi-cloud, data protection has become a really hot topic. Uh, you guys have dramatically simplified your data protection offering yep. with Spectrum Protect, Spectrum Protect Plus. Uh, talk about data protection, how it's changing from where we used to be, just be okay, it's a virtualized world, we kind of understand mm -hmm. the challenges of you know, virtual data protection. That has played itself out. And now there's a whole new wave coming. What's your perspective well, on Well, I don't this? know if the virtual is played. I mean, the, the virtualized environment still, you know, kind of pay in the freight, if you will. Yeah, played uh, out in, yeah, in terms of no, we, no, we understand I, what had to change. Right. And customers have made that change. Yeah, and your largely. simplicity point on that is really key. Uh, so what, one of the enhancements that we announced last year at VMworld was Spectrum Protect Plus. So that's an agentless, OVA-based, VM-based uh, backup and recovery tool. The, the trick is, and it's very simple to use, the, the trick is that we've uh, focused it, its capabilities around secondary data reuse. So I mentioned earlier, uh, that whole workflow has evolved to where you know, the, the data has increasing value beyond its primary use, right? So backup and recovery, but then we can leverage those native format copies. Spectrum Protect Plus is available either on a bring your own license or a monthly subscription in the IBM cloud, other clouds over time. And so we enable enterprises to not only do the, the traditional backup and protection, but very simply move that data to either a secondary or tertiary data center, if that's still part of their, their backup architecture, or into the public cloud. And so uh, it, the, the simplicity factor comes in that it's, uh, it, again, that it's agentless, there's a catalog of where all your copies are, and you can reuse that data for whether it's uh, DevOps or dev test or analytics purposes. Okay, so that's helpful. So what I'm trying to get to is sort of the the enablers, maybe from a technology standpoint, because in the virtualization world it was all about efficiency because you didn't have the, 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 the underutilized physical resources anymore. 
Yep. Right, all the servers were utilized 10%. Yep. <laughs> well, I got rid of a lot of those yep. physical servers and the one job that needed that power was backup, so I needed a new way to approach it. What I'm hearing is, in this multi-cloud world, it's a focus on simplicity. I'm inferring from that a, a cloud-like ex experience. Um, maybe some other capabilities yeah, that you guys so, are Yeah, so you know, the containers are a progression. I mean, VMware came around to maximize your CPU and storage utilization. Containers provide yet another level of efficiency on top of that. They bring with them the need for uh, changes in your data protection. And, and so we, at Think, uh, in March, we talked about our directions around container-aware data right. protection, container-aware snapshots. Uh, most vendors will use you know, snapshots and then volume level controls of how we've traditionally done backup. We have a progression, and we'll talk more about it later in the year, of how we do snapshots. Uh, again, that are container aware, they leverage our tools such as Spectrum Copy Data Management, Spectrum Protect Plus, integrate with our arrays, but they'll bring the same level of capability that we've had traditionally in a virtualized environment uh, to also support data protection in a container world. Well, it's an interesting landscape right now. And, oh, it's and, awesome. And there's so many, right? there's so many <laughs> new tools, and, <laughs> and it's great to be able, like you know, we talked about earlier, to partner with Cisco around some of this great, as well. Great, Jeff, want to give, give you the final word as if, for those that couldn't make it to the show, either share you know, key conversation you're having, you're hearing from customers, or uh, you know, big takeaway for, from the show that you'd like to share. Sure, yeah, you know, we've had a lot of uh, customers come up and, and, and want to know, okay, well, you know, how do you start, right? And we, we talked about there are you know, three primary adoption patterns, you know, whether it's modernizing, and, it, and typically it will start with modernizing traditional workloads. 70% of private cloud usage is for that particular use case. But you can pretty quickly show them then the progression to, okay, they want to be more agile, they want to go cloud native. Uh, from that private cloud infrastructure, you can do that and then you can have a consistent way that you interact around services in the public cloud. And so, you know, that's what we've been talking to clients about. They wanted to know how do I start with what I have and then how do I get to this better future uh, and, you know, how do I leverage your tools and capabilities. And so whether that's with IBM systems components or what we do with our partnership with Cisco, we're showing them how we collectively can help them on that journey. Right. Well, Jeff Hecker, really appreciate all the updates. Dave, thanks so much for joining me Pleasure. for this segment. Yeah, thank you. We still have a full day here, three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage of theCUBE, Cisco Live 2018. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>